In this tutorial, we are going to cover why I use a pen and tablet, a pressure sensitive pen and tablet for my photo editing work. This thing right here, you're wondering what this thing is. It's called a Wacom pen tablet. It's the Wacom Intuos Pro Medium is the one that I like. Uh, for those of you that are watching that may have heard me talk about tablets before, uh, you may have often heard me say I really like the small version. Well, the latest version in the Intuos Pro line, the medium size is about the size of the small version. I like a small tablet. I don't want to move my arm a lot. I think the bigger things and the screens that you draw on are meant for traditional artists of sort and I have I am and have not ever had any traditional art experience so for me it's about minimal movement which is why I like a smaller tablet it essentially comes with a little pen and you get your tablet here yeah I love it I didn't have my glasses on and I just grabbed the pen off of my desk and I grabbed a real pen but I promise when I do the tutorial I will be using you have to use the pen that it comes with because that's what's pressure sensitive and Regardless of what brand you choose, regardless of, of what type you choose or size or anything, I want to be very clear in that I'm not covering all the settings here. I'm going to answer one very simple and really one very quick question, which is why I use these things all the time. And these little buttons and dials and all the other things and bells and whistles on it have zero to do with why I use a pen and tablet. If you care to hear what my feelings on all that stuff, I'll save it till the end because I want to jump over on the computer here and give you some ideas of why this setup is so important to me. I'm in Lightroom right now and I, I will show you a Lightroom example and a Photoshop example of, of what, what's so important to me about this pressure sensitivity. So inside of Lightroom, we don't have many, um, many tools that will take advantage of the pressure sensitivity. But for me, the most important tool inside of Lightroom is the brush tool. And that does take advantage of pressure sensitivity. I, I would gladly give up every other setting inside of Lightroom if you left me with just the brush. That's how important I think the brush is. So when we go on brush, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, a just a, a demo here without actually doing anything artistic to the photo, just so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to crank the exposure way up. All right. And obviously if I just, I'm going to paint with my trackpad and you can see what I get. Okay. So let me undo that. Let me, in fact, let me put it all over here. So I'm, I'm actually clicking and painting with my trackpad on the photo and you can see you know, obviously it looks horrible, but point is, is it's 100%, right? We've got flow and density and things that you could, you know, you could start to manipulate. Um, and I've actually even got a video on, on how to use those things. But now I want to show you what I can do with my pen and tablet. And that is, I, I'm actually going to start pressing really, really hard with the pen onto the tablet. So I can recreate very, very similar to what I can over here with that trackpad, right? It's the same thing. It's a, you know, way overexposed, but if I want to do some pressure sensitivity, what I can do is press a little bit lighter in some places and then press a little bit harder and then press a little bit lighter, right? Get the idea, not a good example, but visually you can see what's happening as I press a little softer onto the pen and tablet. And as I press a lot harder onto the pen and tablet, what I'm able to do. So that's exactly what I want from this. It's that pressure sensitivity to control how much I'm painting in, in, a, in a very tactile type of a feeling way, not to mention, I would throw this out at you is try signing your name with a mouse or a trackpad, try signing your name with a pen. What's going to give you more control, right? And that's why another reason why I like the pen, but that's very hard to demo other than to just tell you, I feel like I get more control. So let's bring this back down to earth. I'm going to bring the exposure up just a little bit at a little bit of temperature, a little bit of texture. When I'm doing this with a pen and tablet, I'll actually even go a little higher on the exposure knowing that, I can always press harder or lighter to get more or less. So it gives me more of a range to work with. So what I would want to do is just a little bit of dodging, a little bit of painting with light to draw your attention to some of the foreground here. So I can press really hard over this rock in the foreground and that's what I'm going to get. All right. Another thing that's integral to all this is my feather setting with a brush, I always put that up at 100. I always hit the right bracket key to get my brush a little bit bigger. 
So that'll smooth out so you won't see a glow around here. So I'll paint a little bit down there. I'll go over here. Paint a little bit. It's actually probably even a little bit too bright. So I'll undo command or control Z a couple times. Then I'll go over here. I'll paint. I can paint a little bit heavier in some areas like over here. So now I'm pressing harder because these were darker to begin with. So they would need a little bit more and then a little bit lighter over here. A little bit lighter, a little bit darker. That might be a little too much there, but you get the idea. If you ever want to see what you did, you can press the letter O for overlay, and that will show you an overlay. And you can see in some places where I press really light, see how it barely gets, you just get a little bit of red. And then if I press really, really hard, I get a lot of red. So that's what that overlay is showing. That's another way that you can visually see what you're doing. Just don't forget to press O again for overlay to turn that off. But uh, that should hopefully give you an idea, especially as I start to pull back. So that's Lightroom. It gives us a lot of pressure sensitivity when it comes to the brush tool again, which I think is the most important. I'll switch over to Photoshop. So uh, in one of my courses, my wildlife texture blending course, I show how to create an image like this. I show several. In fact, that leads me into a perfect segue to a word from our sponsor, which as you guys know, is always me. My, uh, my creative wildlife texture blending course is, I have to say, I've been doing this stuff for almost 20 years. I've never had so much great feedback and seen so many people just get so much from it and share so many photos from a course that I've done. It, it's been insane. Um, it shows you how to do these texture blends on wildlife photos, but it also shows you if you want to do still life and landscape photos as well. I just scroll down through it. It comes with uh, over two and a half hours of training. If you want to create your own textures, although it does come with a few textures for you to practice with, uh, that comes with 10 custom brushes that you can use inside of Photoshop. And I have a video for Photoshop that shows you how to make your own textures. It also, right now, uh, during this week, you'll want to get the premium bundle because it's the same price as the basic package, which comes with a bonus texture pack which has like 18 textures. You can scroll down on the page and you can see they're kind of scenic textures meant to add a little bit of, uh, you know, not only a textured background, but also allow you to almost in a way add some scenery to some, you know, maybe a photo that you took at the zoo. So if you've got a whole bunch of photos that the subject is great and the background is not really great, this is a wonderful course. I am telling you, you will absolutely love it. And uh, I do hope you'll check it out. Okay, so back at it, we're, we're here inside of Photoshop. And so as I built up this image, as I came to the final image, I have my texture over the photo. And I've already done a little bit of masking on this uh, just to get the overall outline. But when it comes to the fine tuning, that's exactly where I go to my brush tool and bring the opacity down. I never do this at 100% opacity, but I bring that opacity down and I start to paint and I can paint a little bit softer on some of these edges to fade them in nicely. If you want a more clear example, just black and white, this is me pressing really, really soft, okay? And then this is me pressing really hard and I can get more, right? And there's even a couple of icons up in the toolbar that can control whether or not you want that pressure sensitivity to control your opacity or over here, even control the size or you can do both if you wanted to with that pressure sensitivity. So back to the other example, when I get to a spot that I want to fade in a little bit more, like down here at the bottom, now I can press a little bit harder, okay? And now I can fade that in more than the rest of it. And then as I get to some other places, I can go and I can press a little bit softer. The whole, the whole idea behind you know, texture blending is, is you are blending the texture in. So it's, it's not on off, it's not like you're replacing a background. A key part of this is the blend and getting a different getting a different edge on different parts of your subject is so important to that blend is so important to masking it's so important to really anything where 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 we want a lot of control in how we're blending one thing with another one and again that's something i can't get from a trackpad i can't get it from a mouse i can only get it from pressing harder or softer with this pen on the tablet so to answer the question that I had mentioned in the beginning of the video, I said to cover now, which is all the little buttons and dials and things, all right? I, I gave you why I use the tablet. This wasn't a tutorial on using the tablet. 
this to answer the question of why it's so important to me. And it's that pressure sensitivity that I can't get from a mouse or a trackpad that means so much inside of my photo editing. As to the little buttons and dials on there, the reason why I don't really care for them is because I've usually got my tablet set up here, I've got my keyboard set up here, okay? And my keyboard's never far enough away that it's inconvenient for me to go do something on the keyboard. I've got bright, shiny object syndrome. I'm usually doing 100 different things besides editing. So that setup works for me. And it's, it's taken a long time, but I've done this for a long time and I know what works for me. Now, if you're somebody that sits back with your tablet and that's all you're using and you're just using the tablet, then I could see a bigger case for some of these keys because now your keyboard is further away from you and it's harder to get to, it takes more time. So what I would look for from there is what kinds of things do you do a lot and are inconvenient to you? These little buttons and dials and things can be set to anything, any keyboard shortcut, menu command, there's a ton of different things. Uh, best thing to do is go into the settings for whatever tablet that you have and you'll see there's quite a, quite a number of choices. So I know some people that sit back and they set a key to the right arrow key because if you're sitting and editing in Lightroom and you don't have your keyboard nearby, going to the next photo or trying to get to another photo can actually be kind of a pain to try to do it with the pen on the tablet and all that stuff. So a lot of people will set it to the right arrow key. They'll edit, move a couple sliders, tap the button, go to the next photo, edit, move a couple sliders, tap the button, go to the next photo. So that's just an example, but the sky really is the limit as to, to what you can set those buttons and dials to. Any keyboard shortcut combination, menu item, anything that you can think of uh, is fair game when it comes to those things. But at least now you know, for me, why this is so important. And it's to do a task that a mouse and a trackpad can't do, which is that pressure sensitivity, which is really what gives me a lot of control or how I edit my photos.